All right, so one more time, good morning. Let's get started. Finally, Stani. Uh, first thing I wanted to mention was uh, he received a couple <coughs> of questions about the tutoring. So I want to tell to everyone, uh, the two tutors that I am aware of besides Aaron who know JavaScript are Sophia Allen and she is in Sam building. And I don't know her hours, but I, I messaged her to ask her for them. So definitely see her. And Kira Nork also has taken JavaScript with me, so he should be able to help you as well. So these are the two names. And um, I don't always get a chance if you email me a call. I just don't have the capacity to look at code like that. So if this happens, uh, it's better if you try to get my attention or Aaron's attention during the last portion of the class so that we can look at it. Unless we don't have time to solve it, then that would be the only case where then I'll say, please email me. But Please don't just email me, but they call me during lab time. I just, I can, you know, I don't have the capacity. Uh, what else was I going to say? Uh, so for today, um, what I was thinking is I'm going to start the lecture on jQuery. So good news, we're moving to jQuery and you're going to find it a lot easier to work with. Uh, but for the second part of the class, again, I would like to give you one more lab session um, so you can complete your JavaScript work. And then Monday we have off. And then on Wednesday, we're going to continue with jQuery. Aaron, do you have anything to No, add? I was like, yes, Monday off. I forgot about that. Oh, OK. That's why you're shaking your head. <laughs> yeah. I've been thinking about it a lot. But apparently, the children have the entire week off, the high school and the middle yeah. school. Preschool, every, I'm done this point. Yeah, they always have vacation. I don't know why. Yeah, every, I know. The whole week. They always seem to be off. Week off. Right. I think it's uh, mid-winter break. Yeah. yeah. Do we get a makeup day for last Monday? We don't get makeup days, or not not to my knowledge. Um, the high schools do, but I don't think the college does. So we're going to try to get through the material anyway, but not the formal makeup. Maybe um, I'll figure something out. All right, so let's talk about jQuery. And I know that some of you in this room have used jQuery before because Several of the instructors use little snippets of jQuery in their Web 110 or 120 or 130. So who has used jQuery hence one person? Oh, in, in addition to Aaron, a few. Okay, so fewer than I expected, but that's okay. So let's talk about jQuery. What is jQuery? jQuery is a script, or I like to call it the library, and it is written in JavaScript. As you can see, working with the JavaScript DOM methods, do you find this easy and pleasant and enjoyable? Does anyone? So most people don't find it particularly easy or enjoyable, and in addition to this, there are differences between different browsers. So that's why jQuery became, became a popular popular technology <coughs> because it allows you to do the same, to accomplish the same tasks as JavaScript, but the notation and the syntax is a lot more easy and intuitive to use. So it's going to be like, a, you can think of it as a layer on top of JavaScript that we're going to learn. Right? And so the way that the syntax for jQuery works is going to be um, somewhat similar to CSS, if you will. Select a statement, uh, sorry, select an element, and then do things to the element. So that's a little bit like with the DOM. You select an element and then you do things to it, it's just it's a lot easier to do, especially the doing things part, or both of them. So we have CSS style selectors, and there are many different ways you can select. In fact, we need to investigate um, all of them, or most of them, but for now, just an overview to give you a sample of jQuery. So you're going to say jQuery, so this is the name of the library. One thing you need to keep in mind is in your code, you need to, you can mix vanilla JavaScript and jQuery in the same file. So you need to indicate, as in this case here, when you're using jQuery, right? 
And then the selection in this case is ai.hot, which you select. You can tell me what that you select. You should know this. What does this mean? The, what well, are we selecting? Oh, it's just a little bit more wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't care, but um, how uh, does anyone? Well, come on, guys. I'm just asking what is the meaning of this. So, this it's is the class. We're selecting a class with a, a list with a class of a class, right? Okay. Technically, going down. And so BigQuery, we can think of it as a function that takes an argument. And the argument will be a CSS style selector. And it's going to be used again in quotation marks. More commonly, instead of using jQuery, you're going to see a dollar sign to indicate that this is now jQuery, not plain vanilla JavaScript. Uh, one Additional confusion you might encounter is dollar sign is a valid var a variable name in JavaScript. So if someone uh, names the variable dollar sign, just for example, it's a common shortcut notation to say variable dollar sign is equal to um, document dot get element by ID of, and then you pass it in an argument. Uh, so in other words. Um, there may be two different dollar signs on the page and you need to not allow this to happen or you need to account for it. Because nothing prevents, uh, you know, prevents you or anyone from creating a variable dollar sign. And this is not this variable, this here means jQuery. Okay, and so the way it works is when you select it, it's going to create a jQuery object. And the object, of course, is going to contain references to the elements as we have done with uh, JavaScript. And again, a lot of what I say will be similar in what it does is just the implementation of being different and in fact easier. And so since jQuery is an object, it's an object that has properties and methods that we can use. So you can work again with a jQuery selection or a set, just like again in the example with the DOM. And then after you select uh, one, one element or a set, then you're going to do something to it with the jQuery methods. For example, you can hide this particular list. And to hide it, all you have to do is call the hide method. So that's, as you can see, a lot easier. So I should also mention that jQuery was extremely popular and it seems like we are now seeing more a push towards other frameworks, but I'm not convinced we shouldn't be teaching it yet. Aaron, you've been going to some meetups. Do you, have you heard anything about? I just find that like jQuery is like good for like what we're doing, like building sites and it's kind of like bootstraps where if you need to like do something yeah. on the fly, then I think jQuery is very useful. Um, but it's interesting because I think what's happening is like the expansion of libraries and that like if you're doing a very specific thing, they've built libraries that do just that thing. So oftentimes if you are doing something in Angular, you don't really want to use jQuery, you'd rather use a library that has more Angular methods in it. Right. And so it's just like a matter of different tool for different job. Right. So thank you for this insight. So for now, I think it's a good investment of our time to cover jQuery. And we're going to touch upon some of the other frameworks as well. It was funny, I was, um, I was writing with someone and they said that they, they know um, Java, JavaScript, Gile, and something else. And I assumed immediately the Gile was a new framework and I said, I never heard of it. Turned out it was a typo. <laughs> they meant to write like Java EE, so it was pretty funny. I just automatically assumed it must be the latest framework I haven't heard about. <laughs> All right. So then select the element, and then you can update the content, you can change the size, you can change the visibility, and you can use event handlers. Um, What's your name? I'm sorry, Chris. Chris. Oh. Sorry if this is off track, but um, sure. that brings up that question that we had on one of our online assignments. I'm curious what people's response. Remember where you had us read something about the Oh, library? we should definitely talk about that. 
Should we pause here and talk about it? Maybe it's a good time. Yes, so you get an assignment to read the long article titled, what was it titled? The worst article ever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> so that is one response. It sums it up. Uh, let's see, I can bring it up here. No, Aaron, what was it called? Do you remember so I can remember? Yeah. That was the online assignment four. So that seems it's scattered day and a good time five. to take five to talk about this. Here we go, I found it. Yeah, uh, reading this one, this one. Everyone's essays is kind so, of <laughs> so one response was that this was the worst article ever. Do you care to elaborate, Daniel? Yeah, it was frustrating until I got the point of reading it in the last like five lines. Right. I, I was like looking up everything that was being mentioned and trying to learn it as I was reading. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> right. I spent like most of the Saturday doing that. And then you're a. Uh, and then your feeling about it changed from frustrated to overwhelmed? Yeah. Right. Well, All right. Anyone else? Chris, you brought it up, so would you like to share your thoughts? Yeah, I just thought it was like what you're saying is, you know, the, that's what made me think of it, the way you said, like, it was a typo in there, and you're like, oh, that must be a new, because right. there's all these things popping up, and it's like, you know, it's so hard to, um, you know, you got to, so for me, I think the answer, the way I answered the question was that, like, it makes it more important to actually understand the fundamentals of the language, because you can't really use these libraries if you don't understand the fundamentals. That's a great Especially answer. when you have to troubleshoot something, yeah. you're totally in the dark, you know, the kind of I'm in full agreement, and it's not just me, uh, I think I mentioned we speak with professionals who work out in the industry and uh, they kept on saying vanilla JavaScript, you need to know vanilla JavaScript so you can work with these libraries. I was yeah. browsing around looking at the help wanted ads for JavaScript and some sometimes you find descriptions about knowing about some kind of framework and when you look up the frame, it say three years experience in this framework but the thing hadn't been out for a year. <laughs> yeah, that's, I know, that's very so these job descriptions? The recruiters who are not. <laughs> With technology, yeah. So that, that you'll see that happen. I guess another piece that comes to mind well, is like, um, yeah, um, how do we have, you know, they really have to have faith that the libraries that you pick up or the technologies that you pick up are going to have some kind of lifespan because otherwise you're going to be coming back to clients and going, hey, you know that website I built last year? Well, the technology is outdated now and I need to, need to redo it. And, you know, they're not, if they don't have it in their budget, yeah. That's a good point, and I don't know that uh, faith is going to be sufficient because I feel like it's a bit of a luck almost or random, you know, random, and maybe also depends how you can't know ahead of time for all libraries how good they are. And you, yeah. All right, what is today with all these phones ringing, you guys? Can we turn them off for all that? This, this is very interesting. So, please. It seems that at first, I'm like 10 years old. I never can catch up with so much, uh, so fast development. The later one, when there is a second song, I think everybody needs to catch up. So, I feel a little better, you know, and it means you're never too too late to, to come in. Uh, you can just cut off and it's cut true. into the newest one, then maybe you feel better. That's a great point. Actually, that's a couple points. So maybe you just come in and forget about PHP altogether. And any other comments? I had thought, like, I don't know if this is regressive or not, but uh, the client in the article was just asking for something really simple, and the trendy web developer was like trying to sell them on all these things. Right. I was just wondering, like, sometimes you know, if the client's needs aren't that complicated, does it really matter? if you're using the newest thing or not, I don't know. That's a great point. I don't know if the person asking the questions was the client or another programmer who was trying to work. Was it the client or? Well, I guess it was a less, ex or a, a a less junior developer. Right. developer. And that's a good point. So what do you think? That's a great question. You guys are bringing up very interesting points. Like he, he mentioned that he wanted jQuery and the guy was like, no, no, that's not done for reasons of blah, blah, blah. But 
uh, you know, if it works, it works. Right? Okay. Um, do you agree with? I agree and disagree. Like, I think it is, it, it is like, it seems the guy is asking, I agree with you, like, if he asking for a simple thing, why the other guy is trying to make everything sound so confusing? Because that's why he ended up doing it. In the end, he just ended up going back to the beginning and say, yeah, you can use that, man. So, but at the same time, it kind of, if you only know that little bit, it kind of closes you to a certain circle. So, right. I don't think you have to know everything on JavaScript. You definitely be able to work knowing some because it seems like a lot of stuff and it's kind of like frustrated, like the guy said. But I think I think you're also closing your circle if you don't know a lot or enough. I guess right. I don't know what's enough either. So, okay, another great point. Um, so, I think I like to try to optimize my you know work workflows, <coughs> if you will. So in a way, if you're a developer, you'll be you'll be placed in the in a what framework to use based on the fact where you work. If your company uses React, you will use React. So that makes it easy to decide. But for you, for not working yet, what can you do? And I know that uh, several students um, have gone to meetups and. Um, you know, one of them had come back and gave a talk about React and said, it looks like what I'm seeing is React is now becoming more prevalent than Angular. So you can invest a little bit of time going to meetups and then hear what the um, people who actually work in the industry say and maybe invest your time in this direction. But I don't think there is a foolproof answer. So that's, you need to be aware that you might have to invest in something that might not pay off. I don't know. Oh, I no. don't think so. No. What okay. is that? Okay. It's a mother language. <laughs> it's just it's a meetup that I'll let you know going. What is it called? It's Scala Bridge. Oh Scala. Oh Scala. okay. So Scala is a whole yeah, I've heard of Scala. Scala is not um Scala is a, what do you call a functional language. Oh, okay. So functional languages are used for um when you need to do um uh, synchronicity or handle synchronicity. So if you have a, like um one variable or some object that has to be updated for multiple processes at the same time, Scala is a good language for this. And because a lot of the developers seem to like it, they're maybe expanding beyond what I said. And so maybe now mm -hmm. there is a, you know, web development in Scala, I don't know. The other interesting thing about Scala is that it is not an object-oriented language such as the ones we have here. It's what they call functional language, so everything is a function. So I don't know that it would be a best investment of your time to go to it, but it's good to know. It's good to know. I want to include them knowing this word they're not to Right. Okay. I've been trying to get to write a little blog about functional languages, and I just haven't gotten around to it. But I, I'm planning to, so when I do, I'll post it. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. When I read this article, my thoughts kind of reminded me of like the banking industry about how they made words for like these, like. Oh, it's this. Well, what does that mean? Oh, it just means the interest on your investment. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, that's what it is. And so I feel like it's by knowing JavaScript, like vanilla JavaScript really well, learning these libraries should be like pretty easy to grab onto. So you'd be like, what is this? Oh, it's just this does functions for you automatically and it does this and it does that. Oh, okay. You know, so it's like, and these are all these different frameworks are just basically big words that encapsulate like an idea of what they did with JavaScript for whatever reason. So it's, I guess me thinking about it that way made it less seem less stressful as far as I, like, you should be able to pick it up later just as long as you're super solid in vanilla. Yeah. So yes, I think that being solid in vanilla JavaScript is really uh, the best investment probably you can do. And then with jQuery, you're going to have an ability to maybe if you're freelancing put together some pretty nice looking widgets and make sites work. And then you probably still need to go and invest your time in learning something else, such as React or, or um, the advanced JavaScript that Brandon teaches here. He teaches the mean stack, so that is going to teach how to work with JavaScript from front end all the way to the server, so full stack development. Any other comments on the article? Well, Chris, thanks for bringing it up. That was something probably worth our discussion today.
Oh, don't, okay, I will digress. I'm not really digressing, but move off tangent a little bit for one other point. So TypeScript is something that I'm interested in because have any one of you encountered TypeScript? So JavaScript is a weekly typed language, which means that you can, there is no type checking. So you can get into some runtime and beyond errors because the types of the data were not checked. And that's a problem according to many developers. So some developers are developing TypeScript as a way to make JavaScript into a strongly typed language, which means that you're not be allow allowed, you know, to assign a string into a number. It's going to give you a syntax error, which in my opinion is better than allowing it to proceed. So that's something I would recommend keep an eye on as well. And if we have time, this might be one of the special topics we cover. Because I, I think we're going to have time for several different fr frameworks, the way things are going. So. Okay, so you also want to distinguish the variable names between JavaScript and jQuery. And the convention is to use a dollar sign symbol to indicate that this is a variable that is containing a reference to a jQuery object. So you'll be starting your variable names with dollar sign. So right now here, the titles variable is going to contain a reference to the class title. <coughs> so the selector is a CSS style again. So this is a ID selector, as you all know. And then there are uh, complex selectors that we can use as well. So this is the first child of um, unordered list with the ID of list, for example. So you can make quite sophisticated selections. You can, in many cases, just use an ID as well, but the functionality is there to support for you to make more sophisticated expressions inside the selector. Okay, so getting content is going to be, in fact, before actually hang up, before we continue with the lecture, let's do an example so that you can see first hand. So the first question is how do you get jQuery? And I will show you how. So jQuery also has its own site. And maybe uh, let's start by reviewing the content here. So go to jQuery.com. Again, jQuery is CSS3 compliant, it's cross-browser compliant, and it has a lightweight footprint, so it has a lot of advantages to use versus uh, vanilla J uh, JavaScript. Do you have your images? Maybe we can try doing, let's do this without images, just, uh, let's see here, where's the best approach? I'm trying to find something that doesn't require still separate <coughs> images, so just give me a second here. I just want something very basic. Okay, so I think we'll do this here now. All right, so please start brackets.
save as so start a new file save as first jQuery we're going to do some examples from the book but right now I feel just go with even more simple than that first jQuery.html Okay, and then let's add our first jQuery body. So you can obtain a jQuery in two ways. It's a library, and what you could do is you could go to the jQuery site and then download the library. And then you have to include the library so that the methods are become available to your script. Uh, an, an, an alternative way of getting jQuery, which is preferred, is to use what we call a CDN, which is a content delivery network. So what, uh, for example, the one I like is the Google jQuery CDN. So if you Google, Google for Google jQuery CDN, please. And this is where Google hosts various popular libraries, um, including Angular. And if you keep on scrolling down, apparently, see, I've never heard of, has anyone heard of indefinite observable? Sounds interesting. <laughs> and then we have jQuery. And so instead of downloading the library of jQuery and then including it in your folders, what you can do is just put a link to the CDN and then all the methods in jQuery and properties will become available to you. So that's a great way of uh, using <coughs> jQuery. And you can also see here that right now there are three different versions that you can work with. Version one, two, and three. And the reason we have the different versions is because um, there are actually differences in the way certain methods are implemented between the different versions. And so if you have developed uh, a, a site that works with jQuery 2, if you include jQuery 3, you might see problems. And in fact, sometimes I've even seen, I've tried to do something in class and it doesn't work anymore because it, it, I've used the wrong version now or an outdated version. So we'll try the 3x and just, uh, you know, again, it might be the case that some method might be implemented differently that we're using and we just have to adjust. All right, so you copy. All you have to do is, as you can see, it has a script tag and you're just going to copy and then you're going to put the link in the head of your sorry see i keep on doing this and i wish you guys would correct me so this is a title And then we're going to paste the link to our script in the head of the document. And it is, as you can see, a script with a source. So it's the same as if you include your own file <coughs> in JavaScript, except it doesn't come from your folder. It's an absolute uh, URL to the Google servers. And sometimes, the question comes up now, well, wouldn't my site be, is anyone going to ask? Do you have any concern about using a link, Chris? You have to be connected to the internet. You have to, well, you have to be connected. What if they change the address? That could be a problem. I don't think it's been a problem, but it could. Any other concern this might raise? It's on a HTTPS, so sometimes you get this weird cross browser, uh, cross um, 
about? Yeah, I know so what you're talking about. Uh, this is supposed to be secure, so it's a secure connection. So I, I don't know if that... your site's not secure, sometimes you get these good props. Um, anyway, I'm sure it's not. I haven't encountered it, but it could be a problem. I'm not... I mean, Google is a pretty reputable company, so... Anything else? I'm thinking of one other concern. No? Well, the other concern that uh, comes up is, um, is this going to slow my site because now my site has to go and grab from Google? Well, it turns out that the answer is no because Google has servers all over the world, so um, it's not a problem. And the other thing that happens is once you get to the um, link once, to the library once, then it gets cached, and then it's actually even more efficient than including it. The only, um, I think, I mean, your, your concerns were valid, but one other valid concern is some developers are very concerned about having control over all the code. And then if you download it and then upload the files directly, you have full control because they're on your server. Whereas right now, they're on Google's. Is it, is it theoretically, Faster to use their CDN than if they're using their own like software or something like that. Well, that would be another issue. Um, so if you're using your own, code, but you're using a CDN okay. If you're using your own server, this means that you have um, uploaded the page along with the files on the same server, and that's very fast because they're all yeah. in the same place. Now I don't know if there are any uh, there are other. CDNs besides Google you can use that, that host the library. I don't have information <coughs> if they're faster or slower, but the one with Google I know it's fast. So now that we have included jQuery, we can start using it. I want to point one other, so a couple of things here. So you can see the, the version, you can see the version here. And you can also see this mean is part of the name of the file. And you'll see this a lot. So what this means is that the file has been minified, or in other words, it's been compressed and all the white space has been removed. If we look at the file, and we can, it's not really meant for humans to read, but it's uh, just more compact and therefore optimized for performance. Um, I will see if I can show you what this looks like. Let's see. And there are tools for minifying. Here we go. So this is the jQuery library. And this is... Um, right. I won't try to read this necessarily, if I were you. But one, um, what we can do, we won't be using the download jQuery, but I'm going to show you how, and then we can look at the files. So if you wanted to include your own, you'd say, so please go back to the jQuery.com and then download jQuery. And then there's several different versions. So the compressed version is you just download it and then you upload it to your server. You can also download the uncompressed version if you actually knew enough to go in and nothing prevents you from even making changes to the jQuery methods if you were so inclined. So you could do this if you wanted to. I will download the uncompressed so we can just take a look in it. So you can save link as, and there it is. And we're going to finish this example and then take a break and then you have lab time. So let's open it in brackets. All 
so this is the jQuery 3.1.1 library. So we have a global function. They're using the strict mode of JavaScript, which is more, is going to give you more constraints on the syntax level, so you get more syntax errors instead of down the road. And maybe just take a few minutes to take a look um, if you like. You might understand some parts of it. But just take a, take a moment to look through this, please, if you like. In the industry, do you find that like companies stick with a strict syntax? So the same for like things like JS Lint, so that like it, it is strict. Because I think yeah. that's something that would be like it would make sense to me if they did, but I don't know if it's true. I think they should. I don't know what everyone is doing. These guys are using the strict. So I think many people are, and probably everyone should use it. Because it makes it easy to get through mistakes. We were talking to Bill with the video when they're talking about in companies and how oftentimes senior developers can not waste time with junior developers and just like put it in JS. Then, like, that way a lot of syntax is just taken care of. You exactly. Don't have to, like, go over like, tiny details. Yeah. In fact, we should definitely show JS Lint to the class as well. So, that's a good reminder. Thank you. All right. Well, so this is the jQuery library. And uh, if you have it locally, it's just another JavaScript file, so you'd put it in the folder and then put a link to it. So that's, I really like this idea that it's the same process as it's your own files. And you can include more than one JavaScript file if you need it to in the same brackets. All right, so let's finish our little code snippet here, the, or the program. So the first thing we did was to include the jQuery, so it's now available to us. And let's add some, um, couple elements to work with. This is actually a W3 square example since it's the simplest thing that I think illustrates the point. So we have a paragraph, a heading, just shown this um, link before we And then a button. Take me to high paragraph. And so this is the file, the HTML. And now adding the first lines of jQuery, we add the jQuery uh, in and the script track using the jQuery methods has to follow the link that imports the library. Otherwise, you're going to get dollar sign not find error because it's not going to find the methods you're calling. So the sequence makes a difference here. And we're going to use dollar sign to indicate we have um, we are using jQuery. And then we're going to say dollar sign document dot ready function. So the syntax you just have to get used to it.
So jQuery object we call document ready function. Closing <coughs> tag for the ready method closes out down here. And then we have curly braces for the anonymous function. The meaning of this statement, which is a uh, commonly used, you're going to see it a lot if you look at jQuery source code, is to make sure the elements have loaded. So document ready is going to check that the elements on the page have loaded before you start using jQuery because maybe if you have images or something loading that you're trying to access before it loaded, it will not work, right? So this is a boilerplate function that usually, not usually, but you should wrap your jQuery in this function always. Anything to add? I was going to say, usually you see, if you don't see this, you see something that does the same thing, which is always like. There are two syntaxes, and we'll show the second one as well. So this is, there are two alternative syntax to do the same thing. Thank you. Okay, and then we want to select, so the select the element, element. So we say dollar sign, and then we're going to pass the button. We can select on uh, element name in this case, and that's okay. We only have one button. If we had multiple buttons, we would need to give one of them ID and then select by ID. Yeah. So we select the button dot, and then we are going to say click, which is a click event. And then we're going to start another anonymous function in which we will select a paragraph and hide it. Set this out. Where did I put this file? Button click function <coughs> that doesn't need a um, it does. Okay. It does. I was about to test it and probably if you failed. So okay, let's test this and see. So take a look to see what it should do if I got this. Okay, so again, it's not in a loop, so we have to reload the page, but if you click. Click me to hide a paragraph and hit the paragraph. So get this working and then see if you can change it to hide the heading. And also, uh, I'm going to show you right now. Um, sometimes you will, um, someone will import the wrong file or have a typo and then jQuery will not be available. So if we don't have jQuery available, let's see here. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> That's more advanced than we are right now. You can toggle, for example. Yeah. Um, no, you have to reload the page, that's what I explained to you, right? You only, the only event you have is a click, so you haven't coded it to do anything else. That's why it doesn't do anything else. Okay, well, let's see that I'll just control X this right now. So let's say you forgot to include the script, and then you're running your, um, testing your site, and I want to show you the error that you're going to get if you didn't include jQuery properly so that you know what to look for. So if you see, Just one second, please. Okay, so right now uh, my jQuery library is not included properly and I'm clicking and nothing is happening. So I'll take a look at the console and it's going to tell me this is the error that you, you might encounter 
And this error means that you have not included the jQuery library properly in your file. If it says dollar sign is not defined, it means let me go and check did I include the right file in the right place in the right order. Okay. Okay, so do, uh, go ahead and take a moment, please, to make it hide the heading instead. Did you make it do that? Yeah. Okay, should be pretty easy to do. Yeah. Can we also um, go over how you do multiple events? Multiple events? Uh, yeah. Sure. Like yeah, we can do that. Um, we will do that, and I'll make a note of it. Right now, I wanted to show you how to, um, well, yes, actually, do multiple events, which is to hide and show. I think that's not exactly your question, because you're asking, well, let's, let's do this and see if, um, if you answer your question. I googled jQuery sure. multiple selector and it shows the syntax of like within your quotes, just put like h2 comma paragraph comma button, like all inside the quotes. Well, this is one event in multiple selectors though. That's, yeah, that's, that's like tying them all together. Right. So if you wanted to alt it here. Yes, can we can do that. Can you hide one of the paragraphs? Yeah, yes, you can. So if you wanted to hide one of the paragraphs, you'd need to give it an ID and then select it by the ID. Right, so it could be um, ID P1. So try hiding one of the paragraphs instead of both. So this is the example with one paragraph. Would you like to do a show then hide example or take a break and have lap time? You want to do one more real quick? Okay. Let's do one more. And see if we can modify the one we have here. So I'm going to Be selecting by paragraph. Okay, so we have a button click. Give your first button here or the button on the page ID of height. And then the text for this button will be hide. And then this is hide. Show. So we have now two buttons, hide and show.
Instead of selecting a button up here, now we're going to select the hide button, the button with the idea of hide, and then we hide. And then we're going to add a couple more lines. So we're going to select the show button, and then click event. Function. Show. Okay, so let me test it and I'll bring back the code. So let's see if this works. It should hide and show. Okay, so take a look up here if you would see what the code should do. Hide and show. And here are the lines of code. And after you finish this example, then we can take our break. And again, right now we're selecting the paragraph, and uh, you can select just one paragraph or anything else that you need to select. Yes. Um, so it just depends what you want to do. If you want, these are different types of selectors. So if you have a hashtag, this is going to mean you're selecting an ID. If you're selecting P, that means I want you to select all the elements on the page. Right. So right now, when we run the code. <coughs> Right now, if you take a look, just if we are, we're working with all the paragraphs. If I make this into an ID, it will only apply to the paragraph that I made. Uh, for example, if I make with the ID of Gus, mm -hmm. then I'm going to say, oh, well, it should be in both then, I guess. So, so you have to say hashtag now because this is the... JS, JS. JS. You confuse me with your different. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's try this. So we gave it an ID. And now, as you can see, oh, something didn't work. But, um, uh, hashtag. Oh, hashtag here. Yeah, there you go. Thanks. Okay, did you see this, Josh? Yeah. Okay, good question. You should not probably name your paragraph, Josh, but. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so 10 minute break. Feel free to move the page as you need to.
Okay, so it looks like we have started lab time. Let me turn off the recording.